Hello and welcome back to Indie Rebel VFX, Hollywood effects without a Hollywood budget. I'm your instructor Chris Temple and in this video we're going to be talking about birds. Now birds is a great way to help add scale to your shot, they add life to your scenes, and it just really helps bring your movies up to, to Hollywood levels. If you start watching these Hollywood films, you're going to see birds flying in the background all the time. Whether it be end of the world destruction stuff and the birds are flying away, Maybe it's just a, a peaceful scene of two lovers standing you know, overlooking a river. You got birds flying by in the background. I guarantee that nine times out of 10, those birds are digital and were put there by visual effects artists. And so in this video, I'm gonna teach you how to do just that. Before we continue though, shout out to Sean Kennedy, the uh, visual effects artist who has used Blender in Hollywood to do this very thing that we're gonna be doing today. So Sean, thank you for inspiring me. And let's go ahead and get started and learn how to add birds in the background of our scenes. All right, well, let's go ahead and get some birds flying in our scene, shall we? First thing we're going to do is go just go and move our viewer off to the side where it's out of the way. And then I want to read in my footage by pressing R on the keyboard. I'm going to navigate to my birds folder and find the background plate that I want to use. In this case, you will notice that it is a TIFF sequence. Now, if you have downloaded this course online, you do know that you get a MOV QuickTime file rather than a TIFF sequence. And that's because I'm able to compress these down a little bit more and thus saving on the bandwidth of what you actually have to download to follow along at home. So what I would recommend doing is uh, download the course and then take this QuickTime file and convert it to a TIFF image sequence using something like DaVinci Resolve. I will actually be having a video later on in this course where I show you how to do just that. And the reason for the conversion is that Natron tends to work better with image sequences than it does with actual media files. So I'm going to bring in my TIFF sequence and open that up and let's go ahead and play the shot and see what we're going to be working with. Okay, so the camera starts up high and then pans down. We see our main character, Ruby, walking along a deserted highway that's not so deserted at the moment given all the traffic in the background here. Later on in this course, I'll actually be showing you how to paint out the traffic and we're gonna put a map painting back here too of a destroyed city, it'll be a lot of fun. But for right now, all I'm concerned about is adding birds into the scene. I'm thinking a flock of birds kind of flying this way off in the distance just adds a little bit of life to the shot. Now you notice offhand that the shot is already got a little bit of a grade applied to it. We're kind of going for that post-apocalyptic yellow rundown kind of feel. So everything's kind of got this golden tint to it. Although I will say now looking at it here in Natron, my brights look a little too bright. So let's go and pull those down a little bit. I'm going to select my footage and press C for color corrector. And now I can come in here to my highlights and just start pulling down the, the levels on some of this stuff. And that might be a little bit much like that. We'll just pull down the overall gain a little bit, maybe like that. Add a little bit more contrast, not a whole lot, just a little bit, play with the gamma. There we go, that looks a little bit better. So now we've got a shot that we can actually work with. What I want to do now is export a still image of this that I can load into Blender as a background to help position my birds into the scene and make sure that they're going to be well integrated. So to do that, I'm just going to go ahead and select the last node in my sequence here. In this case, it's the color corrector. And I'm going to press W on the keyboard and W stands for right. This pops up. I'm going to go choose a folder where I want to save it. In this case, this is going to be just fine. I'm going to type in birds.jpg. It's very important in Natron that you do type in the file extension. I hit save, and now I have my right node properties popping up over here to the right. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and choose a frame that I wanna do. In this case, I think we'll just do the last frame, frame number 227. And for frame range, then I wanna go ahead and make this manual. And I'm gonna start it at frame 227, and we're gonna end it at 227, which it's already set at. And I already know I'm saving it as a JPEG, that's fine. Now all I have to do is hit render and Natron will tell us when that's been exported. So let's go and fire up Blender and take a look at some birds. Okay, once you have Blender open, we want to go ahead and open the birds project file. So I'm going to go file, open, and I'm going to navigate to where the birds are. In this case, they're right here. And I'm gonna open that blend file. Now, I don't expect you to be a 3D expert. I myself am not a 3D expert, but I know how to get around, and that's what I'm going to teach you. So first things first, navigation. If you followed along with the other video in the course where I showed you how to set up the software, then you know that we have 
pre-programmed Alt to be a middle mouse button. So when we Alt left click, we can actually rotate around the shot a little bit. And if we hold Shift in conjunction with Alt and left click, we're able to pan around the scene. If you've not set up Blender to behave this way because you are just now tuning into this course, you can use the middle mouse button to rotate around the shot and shift middle mouse to pan around the scene. However, on my mouse, I have a very fluid one that allows me to spin and scroll very quickly. So I have enabled Alt as a shortcut and just gives me a little bit more control. So let's go ahead and see how this looks offhand. I'm going to press Alt A and that stands for animate. And as you can see, it starts animating through this sequence of these birds flying. Now these are extremely low poly birds. I'm not a 3D animator, I'm not a modeler. I'm simply a filmmaker that does his own visual effects. And all I wanted was something that when it's in the distance, kind of like this, it almost looks passable as a flock of birds flying. And so that's what I did. And we've duplicated it three times. We've offset them and they're staggered so they're not gonna be doing the same thing at any given time. And I've also parented them to this object right here. Now, by the way, the way you select objects in Blender is with right click instead of left click. So if you try to left click and you find that all you end up with is your cursor moving around, it's because you need a right click. So I can right click and I can select the bird. I can right click and select this bird controller, this little cone shape. What this will allow me to do if I move on the widget is move the entire flock of birds at once. And so that's all we're going to do is we're going to be keyframing this through our shot. I'm going to go ahead and hit escape to cancel my animation now. And we need to add a camera to our scene because if we look around, there's no way to actually view what we're going to be looking at. So the way to add the camera is very simple. You simply press Shift A. Think of it as you want to add something, A for add. And I go down to camera and now the camera instantly appears in the scene. I'm going to press 7 to go to a top view. Zoom out a little bit with my middle mouse. I'm going to press G to grab and we're going to put the camera off over here. Now I want to see where this camera is actually pointed. So what I can do is in my properties over here on the right hand side, I can select the camera icon and come down to limits. This will show me where the camera is pointed and also how far the camera can see. For instance, if I press R to rotate and I position it so it's looking kind of at the birds, I press zero to go to my camera view. I don't see the birds, where'd they go? Well, that's because the birds are outside the limits of the camera. The way we fix that is with the clipping over here. And I set this to an obscenely high number, like 50,000. And now you can see it goes all the way through. If I press zero again, I still can't see them. Why is that? Well, let's check another view. Let's go to one. Ah, there we go. By pressing one on the keyboard, I'm able to see that the camera is actually pointed really down low. So let's go ahead and press R to rotate that back up. I'm going to go back to my top view again, make sure that's lined up. I'm going to go to a side view with three. That looks good. Now if I press zero, there we go. There's my birds in the shot and I can zoom out a little bit. Now you may notice if I select one of these birds here that they're sideways. It's real easy to fix that. Simply select your camera again with right click, press R to rotate, and we can set up the birds as we want them to be. All right. Let's go ahead and load in that background image so we can line these guys up a little bit better. I'm simply gonna go ahead in the side panel here and scroll down to where it says background images. Now if your blender looks like this and you don't have that side panel, simply press N on the keyboard and that brings that panel right up. Pressing N again makes it go away. So I press N to bring up the panel, select background images, drop that down, hit add image, and I'm gonna go down and open the image. Now I'm gonna go to where I'd saved it. In this case, I know that it is saved on my C drive. Users, Chris, uh, let's see, pictures, and Indie Rebel. And then here's my bird's background image right there. Press open, and now we have it in the shot. Now one of the things I like to do is make this a little bit easier to see, so I'm gonna come down to where it says opacity, and we're just gonna crank that up. So now I'm looking at that completely. And now we can actually see where the birds are in the scene. Now one really neat trick for lining the stuff up is if we scroll up here in the side panel a little bit, there's a box that says lock camera to view. And if I check that, and now I come in here and I start rotating around the scene using alt or your middle mouse, you can see the camera is actually rotating around the birds. And then I can also do the same with my zooming. 
I can also grab it and do the same thing and basically be able to position the birds exactly where I want them to be in the shot. So in this case, I know that at the beginning of the shot, I want them probably over here. Now in real life, I would probably make these birds quite a bit smaller, but because I'm doing a screen capture, I'm gonna make them a little bit bigger so you're able to see when we do the compositing what's happening and taking place. At this point, I simply want to select my bird control, which is that little cone shape. I know where it is here. If you don't know where it is, you can simply select it from your list of um, objects in the scene up here. So bird control. And now I press I on the keyboard, that stands for insert. And I'm gonna insert a location keyframe. At this point, you can see that there a yellow line has appeared, as well as the word bird control is now in yellow. That means the keyframe has been in. To set my project, my shot, to be as long as the actual video clip. Now I know that if I bounce back over to Natron, and go back to the node graph, I can see that my shot is 227 frames long. So I'm gonna go back to Blender, and I'm going to set my end frame down here to 227. Press enter, and now I have a shot that's just as long. I'm now gonna go to the last frame in this shot. Okay, frame 227, I can see that's where I'm at. And now clicking on this green line, I'm just gonna push the birds forward in the shot to where I want them to be and we press I again and insert another location keyframe. If I go and press Alt-A again, we can see the birds are now flying through the shot. Now one bad thing about this is that if you notice, the birds actually start off slow and then speed up as the shot goes on and then they slow down again near the end and that's because their keyframes are actually curved. They're ramping in and out of that. So let's go ahead and fix that. I'm gonna press escape. And to show you exactly what's happening, let's go and open up a graph editor here. So I bring up my graph editor and I want to normalize these. And you can see now looking at the Y, which is the green line here, that it's got this nice, very smooth, very gradual curve to it. We want that to be linear and that way it has a constant speed throughout the entire shot. So what I'm going to do is press A to deselect everything. I'm gonna press B for box select. And I'm gonna click and drag and select both my keyframes, the one here and the one here. I don't wanna select the rest of these, the Z and the X, because I'm not using them. I can now come down to where it says key and interpolation mode and change it to linear and watch what happens. Now I have a nice linear keyframe that gradual in and out motion is gone. If I come down to this lower left corner again and we go back to a 3D view and I press Alt-A, the motion of those birds is now much more realistic and it fits a lot better into the shot. So let's go and escape out of that and render this sucker out. I'm going to come over here to my render settings. It's a little button that looks like a camera. And there's a few things I want to do. First of which is I want to turn on my motion blur. I also want to make sure that my background is transparent and that's gonna make sure that I have an alpha channel to work with to put the birds over the top of the shot. I'm gonna save this as a PNG sequence, RGBA, make sure you have the A, the A is the alpha, and that's important. And we'll go ahead and do it at 16-bit just to make sure we've got the best image possible to work with. I'm gonna come up here to my resolution, make sure it's 1920 by 1080. I want it to be 100%, not 50%. And the frame rate is a solid 24 frames a second, not 2398 or 2397. I shot it at 24 and therefore this animation needs to be at 24 as well. If you have a GPU enabled, you can click where it says CPU and enable your GPU. But I'm just gonna leave it at CPU for now. It's gonna be just fine for what this is. And now we're ready to choose our output location. Simply come down to where it says output and click on the folder and then choose a spot where you wanna save the shot. In this case, I'm gonna go stars two, raw footage, Ruby, VFX, plates, birds. And I'm gonna save this as an image sequence in here, which I've created a separate folder for. By the way, you create a separate folder by clicking on this little folder icon here. So I could click on this and name it birds2, and then click on that folder to go in, and now I give it a file name, in this case, birds plate. Uh, and we will go underscore, and then hit enter once and twice. And now we're ready to render the shot. Simply come up here and press animation and your scene will start to render. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit here 
and let it go to render out the entire sequence. So go ahead and do that, and we will check back in as soon as the render is done. Okay, well that render is now complete, so let's go back into Natron and actually composite this all together now. So I'm going to go back to Natron. We don't need this right node anymore, so I can select it and delete it. And just to refresh you on the shot, you can see that the camera pans down. So we're going to go to frame 227, which is the last frame in the shot. I'm going to click in the node graph and press R to read my footage. Now I'm going to select this image sequence of birds, hit open, and now we're going to merge this on top of the shot. So we simply, with our bird selected, press M. That brings up a merge node. Line this up underneath and drag the B input into our background. Select the merge, press 1. And now, if you look, you can see I have birds in my shot right here. So let's go and play this and see how this looks. Okay, that's looking pretty good so far. So let's see what we have here. I can see them flying nicely through the scene. A bit fast, but it, it does work. But then we reach the end and it goes back to the beginning. And now we've got a problem. Here's the birds right here. But the scene is panning upward, and the birds are not moving with the shot. This could be a problem. Alright, so now that we've got full motion, everything's been cached into the, the frame, we can see it's, it's kind of goofy looking, right? That the birds kind of slide, and then they suddenly start flying straight again. It's like they're dive bombing and then go completely straight. We don't want that. We want to track these birds into the shot. Now, if you come from an After Effects background, or Nuke for that matter, you're probably already familiar with tracking. So let me show you how this works in Natron. I'm simply going to click off to the side, press Tab, and type in the word Tracker. That allows me to enter a tracker node. I'm going to connect my source to this color corrected layer, and double click on my tracker. And now if you notice, I have a whole new set of tools that have appeared up here in the top of my viewer. Over here in the tracker node properties, I'm going to hit this plus button and that allows me to add a new track point. And we will see that appear right here in the shot. And what I want to do to be able to position this a little bit better is I'm going to select the viewer, press spacebar, and then press F. And that gives me a nice full frame view of this here. I can select my tracker node and select the little dot in the center. And we're going to move this over to the top branch of the tree right here. This looks like a pretty good tracking spot. And we can see in the top left a magnified view of what we're doing. So let's just go ahead and put it just like that. And that should lock on quite nicely. Now I'm going to zoom out just a little bit here. And let's go ahead and track the shot. We're going to use these blue buttons up at the top. And let's go ahead and track forwards first. So I'm going to hit this one right here. It says track FW, track forward. And if we watch this here, we can see that it's actually already starting to track. And let's looks like it's sticking really really well alright now we can see this blue line this shows us what has already been tracked so let's go and come back to where this green triangle is and now we can track backwards so let's go ahead and do that okay very nice we can now see this nice long line that's appeared showing us that the track looks like it's worked so let's go and hit spacebar again to minimize our viewer and press F to make the viewport fit the frame now if you notice, when I brought in my birds, because my birds were a much longer shot, they were 277 frames as opposed to 227, it actually made my sequence, my shot, a lot longer. So I'm going to just simply press S real quick to bring up my master settings and change this back to 227 right here. And that's just going to make sure that everything is, is there and I have animation and there's no bad frames that end up in the shot. All right, so I'm going to go to frame 227 down here at the very end, and I'm going to activate my tracker. With this activated, I can now go ahead and create a track node for the birds that will allow them to be match moved into the scene. Just go ahead and come over here to where it says transform, choose motion type as match move, transform type is also transform, and set the reference frame to our current frame, which is 227. Now I can come down here and leaving this linked so we can make changes later if we need to, just hit export. And it creates a new transform node that is linked with this green line to my tracker. I can now just take this transform node, put it in my pipe between the birds and my merge, and 
go and line that up just a little bit like that. And now let's go ahead and play the shot once more. Looking at this now, I can see the birds are right here, lower in the frame. And as the camera is already starting to pan down, those birds are not moving up. They're staying right where they should be because their vertical positioning is being tied to the top of this tree right here. And so that distance is not going to change. All right, let's check this out here. Camera's panning down. The birds, which are right above my mouse cursor here, are staying in the shot nicely. That looks really, really good. I, I'd buy that. Those look like real birds to me. Now, I'm sure a lot of you out there are saying to yourselves, well, could I have done this in After Effects? And yeah, you could have, but After Effects costs money. This is done in free software. This costs absolutely nothing to use to create visual effects shots for your films. On top of that, you also have the power of nodes, which if you remember from a few videos back, I showed you just why nodes are so powerful. No more pre-comps. It allows you to see your entire shot at once. There's just there's a lot of benefits and advantages to working with nodes, and especially when it comes to working on larger shots than something like this. This is a very simple shot. You probably could have done this in After Effects, but this is a good way to kind of get your feet wet with node-based compositing. It allows you to get comfortable, to get confident with it, and be able to say, oh, okay, I see how this works now. Now, at this point, only one thing really stands out to me about the shot, and that is that the birds are a little bit sharp. So let's just go ahead and select the birds, press B for blur, and let's add a blur of like 1.5 pixels. And that just kind of softens them up a little bit and helps to, to merge them more completely into the scene and into the shot. All right, well that concludes this video on how to add birds into the background of your shots. I hope you've enjoyed. I hope you're starting to now understand the, the possibilities of this, of compositing with free software and how cool this really is. And uh, go ahead and practice with this a little bit. Maybe try moving the birds from left to right instead. Maybe you've got them coming straight over the top and flying away from us. Whatever you want to do, just go ahead and experiment a little bit. And when you're done, I will see you in the next video.